Hey guys, welcome to another Friday video. So today we're checking out a mainboard CPU and RAM bundle that you can pick up for 99 US dollars shipped from AliExpress. So what we have here is our LGA 2011 mainboard for $46. We've got a six core 12 thread CPU for $39 and eight gigabytes of RAM for $14. Saving money on these components means you can put more towards a fast video card. A good graphics card that would go with this bundle is a RX 470 or 480. We're going with a RX 5700 for the purpose of not being bottlenecked and to be able to really show what this system can do. So let's start with the processor. It's the Xeon E52630 V2 with 6 cores and 12 threads. We've got 2.6 gigahertz of base clock and 2.9 gigahertz of an all-core turbo speed. It is built on the Ivy Bridge 22 nanometer generation and we've got an 80 watt TDP and on AliExpress you can get this processor for 39 US dollars. One of the highlights of the LGA 2011 platform is being able to get really cheap server memory. These uh, memory modules go under the name of DDR3 registered ECC memory and the prices are fantastic. For $14 you can get a 8 gigabyte RAM kit and for around 24 you can go with 16. These are rated at 1333 MHz but overclocking is really easy. You just go into the BIOS, set it to 1600 MHz and off we go. And now let's take a closer look at this main board. This might look familiar. We had a look at a similar board in a recent video, but this is the cheaper version without the M.2 slot. So the interesting thing about these main boards is that these are brand new. So on AliExpress, there are a lot of used Xeon and, and uh, processors and used server memory. So they're building brand new main boards to bundle them up and sell them, yeah. And this is uh, the cheapest LGA 2011 motherboard basically that you can get your hands on. So in the mainboard box we get an I.O. shield, we get a SATA cable and also one of these fan adapters which lets you use a AMD cooler. For example, this one here, the famous now Snowman CPU cooler has the usual mounting uh, brackets for AMD for socket AM3 and AM4, but using this fan adapter here, you can um, connect this to your LGA 2011 platform. The other option is you get a LGA 2011 cooler like this one that screws directly into the socket. At the back we have two PS2, eight USB 2, gigabit ethernet and audio. So let's take a closer look at this mainboard. Here we've got the LGA 2011 socket. We have four memory slots. Unfortunately, these are only configured for dual channel memory. The LGA 2011 platform does support quad channel memory, so we're losing a tiny bit of performance in games. And this also means that it's important that you overclock your RAM to the highest speed that your processor supports. The E52630 V2 that we're using today, uh, the memory controller tops out at 1600 MHz, so you want to make sure that you set that in the BIOS. If you're going with a different processor like a 2650 V2, that one supports even faster memory, for example, um, 1866. Here also make sure that you're using uh, fast enough memory or that you're overclocking to that speed. We have a PCI Express 16 slot here for your video card and there's a 1X slot which you could use for example to upgrade to USB 3. There are four SATA ports, the two green ones are SATA 3, the two black ones are only SATA 2 so you will get reduced storage performance if you use these two ports. And on this particular version to get the cost down there is no M.2 slot so we can only use SATA SSDs. Here goes the ATX power supply. We've got a four pin header for the CPU fan and there's a three pin header for a case fan. Here goes the front panel audio. Power button, reset, hard drive LED and power LED goes here. Zero port. This is a debug port. As far as I know, you can connect a uh, programmer here and flash the BIOS if you need to. Two USB 2 ports. This one is for clearing the CMOS and here you can connect a PC speaker. The mainboard didn't come with a CMOS battery so you have to install your own. 
To enter the bars, press the delete key when you turn on the machine. And if you want to access the boot menu, press F11. There's also a basic VRM cooler here, which does the job. The V2 processors with the Ivy Bridge generation, they run a fair bit cooler. And those are usually the CPUs I recommend with these bare bone Chinese main boards. All up, this main board did the job just fine. But you have to be aware that you're buying something that is not backed by like an Asus or Gigabyte warranty. So if anything goes wrong, um, yeah, you might not get a lot of support. There are no BIOS updates. So the BIOS that you're getting is pretty much what you're going to be stuck with. And yeah, the BIOS options are also very uh, limited. Now, there is overclocking on this main board. However, you need to buy a unlocked processor. So the 2630V2 or the 2650 V2, these are locked. So there is no overclocking. It's just not going to happen. You need to buy a processor like the 20, uh, the 1650V2. That's a six core processor, which is fully unlocked. And here's the video card we're using, the RX 5700, just to make sure that we're not bottlenecked with any of the games running at 1080p and we can better evaluate the processor, mainboard and the RAM. And recently I bought a 2 terabyte SSD from Crucial, just makes my job easier, I can install a wide range of games. We're using once again a 750 watt power supply from Thermaltake. Sitting idle on the desktop, 50 watts for the entire machine and running Cinebench R20, the power meter showed 90 watts for the entire system. Let's have a look at some benchmarks in Cinebench R15, 776 and I also have a single core performance result 102. And in Cinebench R20, we're getting 1661 and the single thread performance is 211. And now let's have a look at some games. Let's begin with The Outer Worlds. So this is from the Xbox PC Pass. Five Aussie dollars a month and gives you access to a ton of games. Really handy for being a content creator because yeah, it gives me access to more newer, more modern games and I think that's what you guys are after. So in this game, we're running at 1080p with high details and yeah, look at that. It seems to run really well above 100 FPS. So I think the Outer uh, Worlds is going to run really well on this machine. Rage 2, that's also a new addition to our benchmarks. Once again, 1080p with high details. And yeah, this is just the beginning of the game, but also seems to run really smooth with over 100 FPS. The next game we have is Wolfenstein 2. 1080p high details. This uses the Vulkan API, which is yeah really well optimized. Doesn't need a fast processor and runs well on, on, on Radeon video cards. And we're getting over 200 FPS. So yeah, if you're into Wolfenstein 2, you will get a lot of value out of this machine. I got asked to check War Thunder and uh, I selected the high option preset at 1080p. There are a couple of built-in benchmarks. The first one seems to run a, bit, a little bit too fast, over 300 FPS, but there's not much going on. There was another benchmark to do, yeah, it's called Tank Battle, I believe. And here we're getting around 120 FPS. And looking at the MSI Afterburner statistics, it seems to be utilizing mostly one or two cores. So um, yeah, that means you've got a lot of cores and threads left over that you could be using for streaming if that's something you're into. So yeah, if you think you're buying this for streaming War Thunder, then that should be just fine. Let's have a look at some other optimized games using the Vulkan API. We have Doom running at 1080p with high details. We're getting anywhere between 150 and 200 FPS, which is plenty. And we can see even better performance in Strange Brigade around 200 FPS, also running at 1080p, high details. So here the Vulkan API uh, works really well and yeah, lends itself to such a platform where the clock speed is not that high, but we have enough cores and these modern games can take advantage of that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next. I finally bought the full version. So we're running at 1080p with high details and we're getting excellent performance. Uh, sometimes it does drop to just over 60 FPS, but this is still uh, fairly decent 
and really only in, in some of the more demanding scenes. Dirt Rallies 2, this is also uh, a fairly new title, we're running a 1080p with high details, we're getting around 120 FPS. So in general racing games will run uh, very well on this machine, it's not the only game i tried, um, but the other games they're older and they run even better. So. Uh, I just went with Dirt Rally 2 because it seems to be the most modern uh, racing game that I have. And we also have Far Cry 5. This is an interesting game. It hovers around the 60 FPS at 1080p with high details, but sometimes it dips just below that. And that's uh, quite typical for Ubisoft games that like a high clock speed and high IPC and the 2.9 GHz or core turbo of the E5. 2630V2 uh, is just not quite enough for this game. And I also tried Metro Exodus with ultra details, but I turned off all the Nvidia stuff like uh, tessellation and whatnot. And it seems to have VSync enabled, although it's disabled in the game option. And yep, seems to run at 60 FPS locked. So yep, that's another game that runs really smooth on this machine. So yeah, so far this seems to be amazing value, but does it run crisis and unfortunately it doesn't so this is with all the details maxed out very high details at 1080p and it does dip below 60 fps quite often so unfortunately as good value as this uh, bundle is for modern games it doesn't run crisis so guys another lga 2011 project and this time for $99 you can get an entire bundle consisting of a mainboard processor and RAM. And in the end of the day you need to decide if this is value to you or not. So it depends on where you live, what uh, stores do you have access to, what are the prices like in your region, what is the shipping like, is there a used market and so on. So I understand if you're living in the US or Australia and you've got access to a healthy used market or uh, you've got PC stores in your town, then you might not see the value in, with these parts. But I have a lot of international viewers and uh, for you guys or like me, I live in a remote area and postage usually kills the deal for me. For a $100 bundle, if I have to pay $20, $30 shipping, that's an increase of 20 to 30% and that's often uh, a make or break. And yeah, the performance we saw, um, yeah, good enough. So most modern games will run perfectly fine on this platform and you can invest a bit more money into the video card, which I believe matters most for gaming anyway. Now, alternative to LGA 2011 is of course a Ryzen system and buying a first generation Ryzen CPU from AliExpress. For a six core processor, you have to spend a little bit more and also for the main board and DDR4 memory. But then you're getting a more modern platform with BIOS updates and upgrade option up to a third gen Ryzen. So uh, can't really compare these two um, um, platforms to be fair. But yeah, it comes down to what budget you have, what you can afford. And if you're just looking for something to start out with and uh, money is of concern, then this is not a bad starting point. Also, this platform is compatible with older operating systems, even back uh, going back to Windows XP. So if you're looking for something like this, and yeah, it's a good platform to run Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7 without any compatibility issues. So guys, I was pretty happy with the performance, but what do you think? Leave your comments down below. I do read every single comment. You might not get a reply, but I listen to all your feedback and keep those suggestions coming for future videos. Eventually I will get around to make it happen. And yeah, that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. If you found it interesting, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't done so already, give it a like, leave a comment, share the video with your friends, and I shall see you soon with another one.